So we had the anniversary of 9-11 um, the other day, and George W. Bush, of all people, gave a speech at an event for this. There's a scandal that came about as a result of this. I mean, the whole thing should be a scandal. He's the last person that any of us should want to hear from in this situation. But um, he came out and compared the 9-11 terrorists to the January 6th rioters. Take a look, and then we'll discuss further. The security measures incorporated into our lives are both sources of comfort and reminders of our vulnerability. And we have seen growing evidence that the dangers to our country can come not only across borders, but from violence that gathers within. There is little cultural overlap between violent extremists abroad and violent extremists at home. But in their disdain for pluralism, in their disregard for human life, in their determination to defile national symbols, they are children of the same foul spirit, and it is our continuing duty to confront them. So everybody's, uh, you know, the obvious point people are making is like, well, hold on, that's unfair. Tally up the body count between what the 9-11 terrorists did and what happened on January 6th. And it's just unfair. One group is more violent. They're actively trying to do harm. One group thinks they're saving the country or whatever. Um, I'm not really that triggered by uh, the comparison. The part of this that angers me massively is that He's calling out ex extremists. And, dude, you are the extremist. You are the violent extremist. This is the president that did the torture. We had Guantanamo Bay. We had Abu Ghraib. We had him and Dick Cheney and all the neocons in the administration bend over backwards, search for a legal rationale to use the same kind of torture that, was, that we learned from communist Chinese manifestos from decades before. I mean, we put Japanese soldiers to death for, in World War II, doing this torture tactics to our guys. Now we're doing it to people, many of them, by the way, innocent. Many of the people in Guantanamo Bay, who we rounded up and locked up, we had cut deals with warlords from Afghanistan and Pakistan. And they sent us people who they said were Al-Qaeda. They weren't. It was just their enemies on the ground there. And we locked him up, no due process, no habeas corpus, and we ended up torturing a lot of innocent people, including a German citizen named Marat Kurnaz. So, you are the extremist. You ripped up the Constitution in response to 9-11. You did torture. You did NSA spying. Clear violation of the protection from unreasonable search and seizure that Americans have. You did illegal wars, illegal and offensive wars against a country that didn't attack us. Saddam Hussein had nothing to do with 9-11. He didn't even have the weapons of mass destruction. He wasn't a threat to us. And you invaded, you overthrew the government, you destroyed a region of the world, you occupied it. Minimum, hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians died over there. Thousands of our soldiers died. Nobody who was there on January 6th could do one one-hundredth the amount of damage that George W. Bush has done to the world, and to this country. That's what pisses me off about this. That's what pisses me off about this. Not to say, I don't really have sympathy for the people who stormed the Capitol. I don't really have sympathy for the people who are still convinced, despite all the evidence to the contrary, that Donald Trump won the election or whatever. People who are authoritarian, where if they could press a button and put Trump back in office, they absolutely would. I don't have sympathy for those people. But... I care about the truth, and the truth is, this guy calling out extremists is absurd. You are the extremist. Look in the mirror. You belong in The Hague. You do. The Geneva Convention were upheld. If the Nuremberg Tribunal were upheld, you'd be in, in a cage. So would Dick Cheney. So would Donald Rumsfeld. So would Paul Wolfowitz. So would all the thought leaders who drafted the plans for the war, the project for a new American century like Bill Kristol. You guys are the imperialists and the terrorists and the menace to the world. You are. So that's what gets under my skin about this. You know, I'm not, 
I'm not triggered by this in the sense that, like, I must defend the January 6th people and stop the comparison to 9-11 terrorists. Because fact of the matter is, yeah, it's different degrees of violence, but if you believe in offensive violence over political or religious reasons, that's the definition of a terrorist. So, depends how strictly you want to apply that and what counts as political violence and all that. I get that. There is more nuance in the conversation, but generally speaking, does it all fall under that banner? Yeah. But you know who else falls under that banner? George W. Bush. Even more so than the January 6th rioters, for sure. Because he did political violence. He did state terrorism. For some reason, the media never views U.S. state terrorism as terrorism. Because we're the good guys by definition, and our intentions are pure, and we mean well. So when we massacre civilians, it's okay. Childish thinking. Genuinely childish thinking. And of course, we don't have pure intentions. We're not, we don't care about freedom and democracy and human rights and justice. That was never about that. Ever. Ever. Same instincts, same motivations as any authoritarian, imperialistic nation in history. So this guy led the empire with blood on it on its hands, and he's blaming others. Little too late to care about violent extremists, George W. Bush. You are the violent extremist. Dick Cheney is the violent extremist. And, you know, deep down, he might know this. He might know this. But guess what? Of course, liberals were swooning over Bush's speech here, because... They just don't, they don't care as much about the policy damage that Bush did because time heals all wounds to these people. So they just think Trump is bad and Trump was the more recent one. I assure you, you can really, really hate both George W. Bush and Donald Trump without downplaying the heart of either one of them. Give it a try. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.